where did it all start? <laughs> what a question. Um, I think that in September last year, when I was at college um, and I was doing art, I, I realized that something within me broke. I, I automatically thought about creating a church. I had this this idea of of a broken church with with an absent Jesus, and um, and what was striking for me is is that I associated automatically that broken church with with the earthquake. It is at that point that I've realized that it is time. It is time for me to to work through it, to go through it, because because I've actually never done it before. And I don't know at what stage I am in in the working through it. I know that at a certain point something started within me, and it is a process. I don't seem to be able to stop. And you know, when I thought about church, I automatically connected that uh, the 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 broken church and this this absent Jesus uh, with the broken cross, with with the Christos who were actually holding the arches in in the towns after the earthquake. And with these two iconic churches with the numbered stones which have been rebuilt following exactly the positions as they were before. Those churches have been, you know, photographed many times after after that. And there is the church, the big church in Vinzone, and the big church in Gemona, which is where I used to live. from a therapeutic and, and uh, existential perspective and a spiritual perspective also. Within me there was this concept and this, this idea of being abandoned, abandoned by God. Is there a reason for what has happened? Um, or is it just by chance? And we give a reason to what has happened. We need to create a meaning to give a sense of, of, of justification for what has happened because otherwise we are not able otherwise to, to go on. From a purely you know, therapeutic perspective um, and an existential perspective, we know that, of course, um, we constantly live within the dichotomy of, of life and death. We know that people will sooner or later let us down. People do betray people. This is this is part of you know like therapy one therapy one oh one. There is no future planning because in the end we cannot foresee how 
our future will come. And people are unreliable and stuff happen just by chance and by coincidence. Um, and we all have to die. We all have to die. For me, it was it was realizing that uh, I could trust my gut feelings and I could trust uh, whatever I really wanted to do. And this is why, at my age of 51, I went back to college and I wanted to do art. Um, I wanted to channel whatever I knew it was there, even though I could not point a finger exactly or give a name to to whatever whatever it was there. And something within me, right from the beginning. Right. And also need, realizing how much need for a validation I still had because within me there is still a part which is hurt, a very vulnerable and, and hurt part within me that still needs soothing. I, as, as a therapist, I work with people who um, have gone through or are going through bereavement, who lost people, who um, went through uh, losing a job or breaking up, uh, going through a divorce, or I don't know, dealing with a family member who suffers from dementia, from people who's got memory loss. And um, it strikes me incredibly this this idea that we do have with with legacy and what is it that we bring within ourselves and to the world that we give to the world when i always said that we die twice we die when we die as our body dies but then again we die again when the people who knew us the people who remember us when they die again I've always asked myself, who's, who's going to remember me when I die? Uh, I've lost both my parents, my dad when I was 25 and my mom when I was 40, and I don't have any children. So for me, the idea of legacy and what you leave behind and how you are remembered are extremely important. I always thought that I had to do something. I had to make something, create something, um, become someone, um, because I have been given a second opportunity. I have been given another a set of time and years, a handful of something that I could actually do. I'm, I'm not among the list of the victims who that night died. You know, we, we create uh, mo monuments and we, we organize Remembrance Days and we build mausoleums and we create rituals and we codify singing songs and, and, and things all connected with, with memory and remembering people. But why in the end do we do it? For me, was, what was important was to um, tell truth. Um, even though that was, it's only my truth or my side of the truth, it's still my truth. Um, the population from the land, we are known for being people who never back down, who always keep on going on. You know, this is even, that doesn't matter if there is an earthquake. We need to rebuild, we need to create something. Life goes on, life goes on. So stop whinging, stop whining, just pull yourself together and do something, just create something.
but there is also the need to I mean I think that there is for me the need to acknowledge that there is pain and and there is fear uh, fear and, and and pain and this sense of vulnerability and fragility within us because we have been um, just we're being obliged to to deal with sudden loss unmeasurable loss and we just can't go there and work and clean and create and make another church and and build another house we have got to find a time to sit and mourn So after we organize everything and with the support of the tutor and, of course, the support of Blackburn College, the Bureau got in, ta- in contact with me and we organized something. It was absolutely great and it was fantastic. And and I could see how the exhibition uh, would have pan out perfectly within the walls and the structure of St. John's Church. And then disaster strikes again. I wake up this morning with loads of posts on Facebook and this tragic news, the fact that St. John's Church burned down. And there I am in in a bed, uh, just again another morning, facing, facing desolation and facing destruction. It's not an earthquake this time, but it is fire. Is this, again, just pure chance? Has he got a deeper existential meaning? I'm making, I'm creating a makeshift of a broken church which will be exhibited within a church and then this church burns down. Let's not forget also that we are creating all of this during the Easter period, so which is death and rebirth and, and legacy and commitment and dedication. So... That really made me think that potentially it's not just chance. I go into a sense of PTSD and distress straight away. I think that it is pointless. This is the universe telling me that I've got to stop, that I don't actually have to create this exhibition. And then and then the Friuli and the person who just gets there and rebuild everything sits at a table and I said no hold on a second I will finish making those pieces regardless of whether I have a place or not to exhibit the pieces I will finish making the pieces break the last piece is the afternoon that I receive this email from the Bureau saying that they have found another place for me. And this time it's going to be Blackburn Cathedral. Wow. Tell me again that this is not coincidence. Is it, I don't know, God playing chess or hide and seek with me.
You see, my my partner he had a, an accident um, on a, on his pushbike um, some years ago, and he um, feels every day very grateful um, to be alive, to um, to be here on this earth, and and live another day to be with his daughters, his family, his, his, his friends, his, his, his passions, his interests, and he's full of life. And uh, I still don't feel grateful. I don't see a gratitude in being alive. I think I had to create this. I was I was talking to one of the tutors at, at college, and uh, I was saying that I am not so sure that I have anything uh, to give from an artistic perspective after this piece. I don't know. Uh, the only thing that I know is that I have to make this space. I had to create this this space. I had to go through the whole process of, of creation and uh, learning techniques and tools and learning to use plaster and collecting these jars and bringing some jars uh, back uh, from Italy with me, jars that belong to my family and making them and breaking them. It was cathartic, cathartic moments uh, while I was doing it. I owe it. I owe it to to the people who passed away. I owe it to the woman uh, with no name in the list of the victims. Who was she? Somehow, sometimes when I see this this line that says that says this a corpse of an unidentified woman, I'm thinking that could be me. No one rem rem remembered her. No one thought that could, that that woman could have been could have been her. How tragic is that? What is the meaning of of the life of this woman? And at the same time, what is the meaning, if it has any, my own life? found the courage to go to go back to to the village and the, the town uh, only last March and still my memory was like if it was frozen in time when I was eight years old I I could recognize where my school would have been I recognized where my house was I went there and I took some pictures and um, for the first time in 43 years I actually found the courage and the time to sit together with my uncle and we remembered. We remembered specifically what happened that day, what went on, where I was, where was I sitting, where was I doing, what did I say, where was my dad, my mom him. My memories are full of uh, noises and sound and sirens, helicopters and tears and cries and, and his memories are of silence. Because he went there with my dad from the city where we were staying that evening for dinner and they drove back and when I got to this town it was it was like a ghost town it was just silence because the people they were all under the houses or either waiting to be rescued or already dead
I owe this place. I owe this place. I think to the land, to this land who shaped me so much. I owe it to my friend Marina and and my family and her family. I owe it to my school friends, my teachers, the woman down the lane who was selling herbs. I think I owe it to myself.